Welcome back. Today's statement reads, A thick spherical shell is made of dielectric material with a frozen end polarization. P of R is equal to K over R in the R hat direction for R between A and B, where K is a constant and R is the distance from the center. Find the electric field in all three regions by two different methods. A. Locate the bound charge and use Gauss's law to calculate the field it produces. And B. Find the electric displacement and then get E from the electric displacement. Taking a quick look at the diagram, we see that the polarization points from A to B, but only in the region A to B. Things to know for this problem. Gauss's law in terms of the electric displacement. And then the electric displacement as defined with the polarization and the electric field. To start for the solution, we need to find the bound charges. We know that the volume bound charge is the negative divergence of the polarization. So we take the divergence in the spherical coordinates and we see that the R's cancel, uh, leaving with the derivative of RK, which is just K. Therefore, the bound charge is negative K over R squared. The surface bound charge is a little different depending on where your surface is. For R equal B, we see that we are positive because the dipole points from A to B, but if we're at R equal A, then we are negative because it's in the inverse direction. Now we can use Gauss's law to determine the field produced by these bound charges. For R less than A, we have the surface integral equaling the Q enclosed over epsilon naught, where the surface integral yields e times 4 pi r squared, since our Gaussian surface is a sphere, and q enclosed here is 0. Remember that we are a shell, not a full sphere. Now for the fun part. For r between a and b, we have the surface integral equaling 1 over epsilon naught times the q enclosed, where the q enclosed has to include both the volume bound charge and the surface bound charge. One thing to note here, however, is that for the surface bound charge, we only need it for where R equals A because our Gaussian surface is between A to B, so it therefore does not include B. So you see we have the typical volume integral for the volume bound charge and a surface integral for the surface bound charge. And then that's this calculus that we can carry through. Note that the R's cancel in the volume and the radii A cancels within the surface, and then we're left with a pretty uh, easy to solve algebraic expression. And so we find that the field is equal to negative K over epsilon naught R in the R hat direction. Now recall that a couple questions ago, we showed that the total bound charge vanishes when you polarize a neutral dielectric. So for R greater than B, the Q enclosed is zero, and we again have E equals zero because of this. Moving on to part B. For the electric displacement, consider Gauss's law, and it shows that uh, we don't have a free enclosed charge because there were no free charges given in the problem, just that we had the polarization in the dielectric. So the electric displacement is zero. From there, we can find the electric field as such. Since D equals epsilon naught E plus the polarization P, and that's equal to zero, we can algebraically solve for the electric field in the R hat direction. And again, since the polarization is only between uh, A to B, anything less than A and anything greater than B is zero, and anything between A and B, we see that the electric field is the same as what we just found. Pretty easy, pretty nice.